you've been following this channel for some time, you know that we have a number of EVAP repair videos. And this is just adding to that playlist. This is for the EVAP pressure sensor, which is P0450. Just for convenience, what I've done is I've created a link uh, off our site at carsandtoys.net. And just click on auto repair, scroll down a little bit, and click on EVAP. And we'll just continue to add videos to that link. And you can really go through each one if you have a problem in your EVAP system. Now, today what we're looking at, again, is the pressure sensor. Let me show you where it's located on this vehicle. And if we take a look, this is where the rear driver's side wheel is. And directly behind it, right here, this really should be attached to the frame rail right here. But the bolt sheared off. Off video, I'll have to re-tap that. But this is your pressure sensor. To the right of it, this is your EVAP canister. Okay, right here. And here's your pressure sensor. Now, if you're not exactly sure where this pressure sensor is located on your vehicle, just type in, for example, Nissan Maxima P0450, and very quickly you, you, you can pick up diagrams showing exactly where the pressure sensor is. Use the internet to, uh, to its full capacity because it really will help you out. So what we're going to do is verify a couple of things. We, we want to make sure that power is getting to the harness and we'll test the pressure sensor itself. So right here you have the harness connector and where my thumb is there's a tab. You press down on the tab and remove the harness. There you go. From the pressure sensor. Now what we want to do is verify that power is getting to this harness because if it isn't obviously this sensor won't work. So what we're going to do is turn the ignition key to the on position. Don't crank, don't start the car, just turn the key to the on position. So of course here's our multimeter. Just turn it to the volt setting and then you have a red and a black lead. Now black is ground. Whenever you work at the rear of a vehicle or really on the chassis of a vehicle and you're looking for a good grounding point, as you can see everything's so rusted back here. But at this point, this is a spring connected for the e-brake. This makes a very, very good grounding point. So this is where I have the black wire for ground and then we have our red wire in this case, we need to touch terminal three. So if you take a look at the harness here, we have one, two, three prongs. In this case, we want prong number three. Again, on your vehicle, just do a Google image, Google web search, and you can quickly find out which prong you really need to touch. But on this case, on this vehicle, it's prong number three. And we should see five volts worth of power, which we do. So that verifies that power is getting to the harness connector. If you do not get a reading here, then that means one of these wires are frayed or maybe have a break somewhere else. But often it's because one of these guys are frayed. Uh, maybe if the car's been sitting, got mice, ants, whatever the case may be, eating away at these wires. So just take a look back here. But again, you want to have, in this case, five volts worth of power. So that verifies that power is indeed getting to the pressure sensor. And then of course, once you wrap up that test, just make sure you turn off the ignition key. Now for this next test, we need the continuity setting. So that happens to be all the way down here on the multimeter. This is the symbol that you wanna have. And of course, we are still dealing with the same harness connector, but instead of touching terminal number three, we need terminal one, and we should hear an audible sound. So let's take a look. and we do. So as you can clearly hear we have continuity. Now if you don't have a reading here or you're not getting an audible alert then you have a break somewhere between the harness connector and the car's ECM. And this vehicle could even be a break between the harness connector and the automatic transmission controller as well. So that verifies everything is okay with this harness connector. So the last step is testing the pressure sensor itself. So you do need a vacuum pump to verify if the EVAP pressure sensor is working correctly. Now I've already done this in a separate video. So what I'm going to do is splice in that repair portion right now and really show you how you can test the EVAP pressure sensor with a vacuum pump. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this pretty well. It's, it's, it's pretty darn difficult to get everything lined up so you guys can see this on camera. But once you remove that uh, 
the vacuum hose, you're going to keep the, uh, the harness connector plugged in. You're not going to unplug it. And what I have here is just a paper clip. And I have a, uh, a connector here with two alligator ends. Okay, it's all one wire here. So what I'm going to do is you have to leave it plugged in again. You can't unplug this harness connector. But in the back you have three leads. In this case we want the, the second or uh, this yellow wire running into the, uh, the connector. You have a rubber grommet back here. You need to clear that rubber grommet and make clear connection with the metal uh, tab. So just get yourself a paper clip and insert it. You'll feel the paper clip place around the rubber grommet and make contact with the, uh, with the metal lead inside the harness here. And then what I'm going to do is just take one end of the alligator clip and just attach it to, uh, maybe we'll put it here, like so. And then what I'm going to do is take the other side or the other end of the alligator clip and attach it to the positive lead coming from the multimeter. And we should see some kind of reading here. And we do. We see 3.2 volts. Now as I apply a vacuum, in other words, let me see if I can get this all on camera here for you guys. As I apply vacuum, that this voltage should go down, okay? You really don't need a lot at all. In fact, you want to keep it under negative 10 kilopascals. That's this uh, red dial. So very, very small vacuum. As you can see, it's already going down. Very, very small. And we're going down. So this works. If we, we release the pressure, which is this guy right here, it should go back up. And it does. So this just verifies that this sensor is working correctly. So that's what it takes if you need to test and of course replace the EVAP pressure sensor. So we're getting closer and closer to having a full line of EVAP repair videos. Of course I'll continue to list them here on YouTube and also on carsandtoys.net under the EVAP repair heading. I think we still have to do the canister and also obscurity codes such as for EVAP small leak which can take a lot of time to track down but I'll have a video up here shortly showing on how you can track uh, track down a small leak in the EVAP system. And uh, until then, we'll see you next time.